Today we are going to be talking about Abducens nerve palsy. Here we can see a sagittal section of the skull. We can see the brainstem posteriorly and moving forward we find the clivus. The clivus forms part of the skull base just posterior to the sphenoidal sinuses. Lateral to the clivus on either side you will find the foramen lacerum. In this view you can also see the course of the internal carotid artery as it passes through the cavernous sinus. Moving anteriorly, we find the common tendinous ring, also known as the annular tendon, which forms the common attachment site for the four rectus muscles of the eye. In this cross section, we can trace the course of the abducens nerve. It arises in the adjacent nucleus, which is located below the fourth ventricle in the caudal portion of the pons. The abducens nerve exits the brainstem at the junction between the pons and the medulla. The nerve then travels through the subarachnoid space and pierces the dura mater, traveling in Dorello's canal. At the tip of the petrous temporal bone, the nerve leaves the canal and enters the cavernous sinus. We will cover the cavernous sinus in more detail later on. It travels through the sinus and enters the orbit through the superior orbital fissure. Once in the orbit, it innervates the lateral rectus muscle, providing motor function. The lateral rectus is one of the six extraocular muscles responsible for producing eye movement and is responsible for abduction of the eye. Here are some key points about the abducent nerve. It has motor function only. It innervates the lateral rectus muscle, which is responsible for abduction of the eye. It arises from a nucleus in the pons and passes through the cavernous sinus, along with the internal carotid artery and a number of other cranial nerves. The nerve has a long intracranial course and can be affected by space occupying lesions and other cranial pathologies such as head injuries and altered intracranial pressure. Cavernous sinus pathology is also common but the adjacent nerve is unlikely to be affected in isolation. This sort of pathology would also present with headache, unilateral periorbital edema, proptosis, photophobia and other cranial nerve palsies. Let's take a look at the cavernous sinus in a bit more detail. The cavernous sinus is a paired dural venous sinus located in the middle cranial fossa. In the center lies the cella tersica of the sphenoid bone, which contains the pituitary gland. Several important structures pass through the cavernous sinus, including the ocular motor nerve, the trochlear nerve, the ophthalmic and maxillary branches of the trigeminal nerve, and the abducens nerve. The carotid plexus and the internal carotid artery also pass through this structure. The cavernous sinus is closely related to several important structures within the skull. A thrombosis within the cavernous sinus can present with cranial nerve palsies, most commonly abducens nerve palsy. The most common cause of cavernous venous sinus thrombosis is infection. Here we can see a sagittal section of the cavernous sinus clearly showing the course of the cranial nerves throughout it, including the abducent nerve. Finally, we're going to look at abducens nerve palsies. There are a number of causes of abducent nerve palsy, including cavernous sinus thrombosis or fistula and internal carotid aneurysms. It can also be caused by orbital pathologies such as neoplasm, inflammatory diseases, infection or trauma. Clinically, abducens palsy will present with slight adduction of the affected eye due to tonic action of the medial rectus being left unopposed. The patient themselves will experience binocular horizontal diplopia when looking to the side of the affected eye.
Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help explain the mysteries of the brain.